Holy crap, I found it. Okay, I was way too east of it. And also, I am now going to finally wrap myself out because I have been calling this ship the Neptune like the entire game. Even though it has said multiple times in the logs, it's not called the Neptune. It's called the Mercury. <sighs> Welcome back to Subnautica Below Zero, everybody. So this is not actually the biggest section of the ship. This is the second biggest section. This is the bow of the ship. Um, and the other one was the stern. And then the uh, last section we need is called the thrusters, um, which we'll get into that a little bit later. Hopefully, we'll be able to find our parallel processing unit in here. Now, the only problem with this section of the ship is that there are a lot... I get, oh, it's so easy to get caught on stuff. There are a lot of squid sharks that like to swim around this section in particular. And the tricky part is actually finding a way in. Um, I think I'm actually on the wrong side of how to get into this thing. I need to be, like, really careful when I'm going around this. But there is, like, I know there's, like, a noticeable spot that you can, like, park in. And you never have to worry about them getting you. It's still much bigger, though, than the section we were in. The one we were in before was by far the smallest section. So, something to keep in mind. Okay, we got glow whales here. Which I don't have to worry about those too much. Because we are on the edge of the East Arctic biome. Which is a big, empty biome of nothingness. Kind of. Uh, you'll you'll see more when we, when we actually get to that. But, I can't go too deep here. I just need to find... Okay, I think that is the way in that I'm going to want to take. So let's do our best here. We're going to be spending most of this episode checking this thing out, trying to get that parallel processing unit, and if we can get that done, we should be able to move on from there. So I know for a fact there is a glow whale that can actually get inside the ship, so you have to be careful in regards to that. We got prawn suit drill arm fragments. We're definitely going to want to get those. There's lots of oxygen plants in here, but there's also a lot of ways to get lost in here. So do be careful. Like I said, this section is a lot bigger than the ones we've seen up to this point. So this one I need to cut into. Definitely going to assign that over my repair tool. So let's get into that. We got ourselves another nuclear reactor, which is actually good coming in here because there is going to be... I believe a lot of those uh, around if we're careful and we can actually find it. Okay, um, what am I going to get rid of here? Let's get rid of the habitat builder. I don't need that in here. Let's have a look around. Okay, so we got a door we can cut into. Let's do that to start things. Because we're definitely going to want to have more access to the ship. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Almost got it. There we go. All right. So we got oxygen plants in here. Let's take those immediately. We'll scan all of this stuff. Lily pad root that goes right through the ship, which tells you that this thing has been here a while. Uh, I'm going to go up, actually. Let's see what sort of rooms we can find over here. Just be on the lookout. There's lots of red ribbon fish in here. So keep that in mind. Not like they're a bad thing or anything. And we got ourselves PDAs. I felt this all went sideways. How could I have known that so much would go wrong? I now I just need to build the test over it. Oh my gosh, Robin! Satellite tower. <sighs> I have to play the freaking PDA again. You are so obnoxious. You know that? Orion's felt this all went sideways. How could I have known that so much would go wrong? failed my crew. No. I don't fail. I didn't get into this position by being a failure. It's this desolate land. Frigid. And cursed. Between these tunneling creatures and the strange sickness that a few of the crew are showing symptoms of, we have to leave at first light tomorrow. We are prepping for a rapid takeoff. We can't take chances with the vibrations drawing the tunnelers, so we're skipping the systems check. Risky, but I have faith in myself and the crew of the Mercury. Landing this thing was practically a miracle, though. But we have to get out of here. Maybe the weapon is to keep people away, but if we leave, it'll let us go. I have to leave the quarantined crew in the cave behind. We will be back for them. 
but we can't risk an unknown infection spreading through the mercury. We're packing survival kits for them, but there's only enough surplus for about two weeks. I'm telling them that we will come back. But I don't think I can land here safely. Twice. I hate this. But I have to leave them behind. I can't risk the entirety of the Mercury. Wow, that sucks. Um, so yeah, a lot of the crew got infected and they had to get left here on the planet. Which is highly unfortunate. Um... But then how in the world did the ship get back here? If it didn't, did it not take off successfully? Did it not make it back successfully? Who exactly knows? Well, I'm going to keep looking around. We got our parallel processing unit, which was the main reason we came here. But I just want to be absolutely sure there isn't more we can grab on the way out of here. So I'm going to go kind of through this way again. I know I need to get out to the sea truck. There's a, quite a few parallel processing fragment spots. What do we got over here? All right, here we go. This is interesting. Take that. Also, I can scan that. Reinforced dive suit fragment. Now that is interesting. That's going to allow us to take a little more damage. I mean, the morning started off so well. I took a team of six out to find the structures from the planetary scans. and We were all in high spirits. I mean, who wouldn't be? These structures would be clues to another sentient race. <laughs> it was highly unlikely. That another colony would be out this far. We were gonna be in the freaking history books. <laughs> Everything was going okay. We were a few miles from the ship when our radios picked up an actual signal. It sounded like an SOS. We got overly excited naturally and decided to enter the water to follow it. <sighs> that decision cost three lives. I mean, half my team, they got ripped to shreds by something. They died, screaming, alone in the cold, dark waters. I, I'm not going back in that godforsaken ocean again. I refuse. Some of the animals on this planet, they look sick, too. Weird pustules on the skin, oddly sluggish. I think we should leave. But Diana said we should stay. She thinks the bio-patent payoffs would be worth it, but those families will never see their loved ones again. They don't care about no payoffs. We, we can't return the bodies. I don't care about the accolades or the history books. I just want to see Layla and the kids. Ah, oh, man. I miss the smell of my wife's hair. The kids tackling me at the door again. That's all I want. To get out of here alive. Please. Okay, there's a couple more PDAs for us to access. Let's try to do that uh, carefully. I'm going to need to be quick here, though. Um, where was... Okay, this is one of them. Well, we landed safely, despite my apprehension. Diana, damned adrenaline junkie, took one of her defining risks and it paid off. Why hire me as the maintenance engineering officer if you aren't going to listen to that advice? <laughs> oh, Papa. I didn't go to school for eight years and get three degrees for nothing. I tried to convince Diana that we don't need to stop for repairs. That's what the drift drive and the secondary propulsion system are for. It's just a bit slower. But she's in charge, not me. On the plus side, I get to work with Yasmin. I didn't know she was such a busybody. She's been going around the whole ship giving folks a hand. I think she was getting on Diana's nerves, so she assigned Yasmin to me. She's helping me inspect and repair the thruster systems. I thought I was the most mechanically inclined person on the ship. I think she has me beat. She can definitely teach me a thing. As long as I don't get too distracted by her smile. <sighs> She's got the best smile. Oh, that's cute. Okay, I want to go grab that last PDA. I was just kind of doing a poor job of juggling my oxygen as I was messing around, honestly. So let's go grab that last one, and then we will get out of here. Wherever it is. Not in this room. It's, I think, in the next one down. Over to the right. There you are. Soul should pay me more to lead these missions. I saved the whole damn crew from destruction. Mercury 2 was nearly obliterated by an immensely powerful energy beam. I don't know any weapon system with that level of capability. The power source to get that kind of range must be... Well, 
otherworldly. We got lucky. The energy signature is similar to some of the weaponry meant to counter pirates on mining freighters. The refraction of the beam across the atmosphere? Orion's belt, it looked like the Northern Lights. Such power. I fired the emergency flares and dumped water from the nuclear core. I think the heat signature confused the weapons tracking for just an instant. I managed a slight evasive maneuver, and I felt the mercury get rocked by the sonic boom as the nuclear runoff rapidly evaporated. That alone could have taken us out. Definitely asking for a pay raise. This is not what I signed up for. My days of risky missions should be behind me. Eh, but what the hell. I still got it. Even if it was luck. Hopefully, whatever didn't want us on the planet doesn't mind when we leave. I'm alive. Stefano saved me. The Mercury attempted an emergency takeoff and everything seemed fine. I was helping the bridge crew with the emergency takeoff since the crew is, well, was shorthanded because of everything. I heard the sound of metal tearing and for a split second, Everything was tinged bright green and unbearably hot. Then I saw daylight, and I was looking down at the ocean and ice. The strongest wind I've ever felt roared in my ears, ripping through the ship. People went flying out the side of the Mercury, so much screaming and chaos. I was lucky. I had just clipped into my seat anchor. Stephanos came out of nowhere, like a malaika. An angel. I felt his rough, calloused hand grasp mine with the gentlest of urgency. It felt like time slowed, he said. I gotcha. Just follow me, Ella. I don't know how, but he used an emergency tether to drag me to the nuclear reactor core, the strongest bulkhead in the ship. We hit the water and everything went black. <sighs> He's sleeping. I think he might have hit his head. I'm exhausted. The adrenaline has long since worn off and my body aches. I think I might have fractured the rib. I'm gonna shut my eyes for a bit. When I wake up, I'll figure this out. I'll save us. Crap. Okay, uh, I'm gonna top off on this one again, but that is not gonna be enough to keep me going. Okay, I really need to find the uh the main room where the crap is it oh no 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 i've already i've gotten myself turned around here this is not good uh i'm gonna do this okay quick 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 quick, 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 quick. we're gonna go fast we're gonna go fast we're gonna go fast Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining yeah okay i need to get over to my sea truck and i need to go there as quickly as possible uh, i think we'll make it okay yeah we should be fine yeesh that was not the best. I kind of got a little turnaround in there. I know there was a door I actually missed. So I'm going to try to go back in really quickly. So give me just a second. And then we'll loop back around. I might as well stuff my face while I'm in here. There we go. Okay. Let's try this once more. So back in we go. There's just that last door that I did not get into. And those, even though it hasn't finished the animation of replenishing itself, I can promise you it is. Oh, wait, hold on. That was a seed of some sort. Decomposing Chinese potato. Well, that's probably not going to do me any good. I'll just pass on that. Thank you. All right, what do we got here? So we're back in this room. Okay, that's good. So there was that one door, but where... Oh, we got another PDA. My instincts are never wrong. Stephanos has always been overly cautious. He hates taking risks, which I suppose is understandable when you're in the back end of the galaxy. But no risk, no reward. Elliot finds evidence of alien architecture on a completely uncharted planet, and he expects me to ignore that? <laughs> Orion's belt, I would be an absolute fool. We've done some scans, and while there aren't a lot of mineral resources on this planet, there is decent biodiversity. Teams go out in the morning. There should be a significant specimen and sample hall for biopatenting, which will be split among the crew as part of the discovery clause. Let's see, Stephanos and everyone else complain when they have a few more sold transgov credits in their uniform pockets. 
They'll learn to trust my instincts at some point. Yeah, okay, I gotta say, Diana is a voice actress. I'm almost completely positive that that is uh, the same actress who plays Delphine in Skyrim. It's like almost one-to-one, -one, but all right, I think that's just another parallel processing unit. I'm not gonna bother with that. We don't need any more of those. I guess we could have gotten all three in this area if we so desired, but I do not. So I, because I already got two in the stern section, so I think we're fine. Okay, um, I am back in this area again. Crap. Not where I want to be, and now we got to loop back around again. Gosh dang it, it's I keep getting turned around in there. It is really hard to know exactly where you're supposed to be going at any one time, and I really don't need those Chinese potatoes when they're literally Warning. decomposing, so. But now we can actually go and craft this parallel processing unit, which is really, really good. We can actually head back to our base now and get to work on that and hopefully put together the test override module. Although it's a little bit of a ways back, so you know what? I think I'm just gonna cut and I will see you guys there in a minute. And here we are. I'm gonna dock this thing back in the moon pool once again. We're gonna put this away and then that should drop our storage modules, no problem. And while that charges, we can go back and we can actually see what we need for this parallel processing unit. I need to also replenish the batteries on quite a few things as well. I probably shouldn't have kept these depleted reactor rods. I just need to dispose of those. Um, let's see. So let's take this one first. Kind of each one at a time. Just sort of take all that. There we go. And then we can kind of swap the batteries out here for the more depleted ones. Perfect. Okay. Let's see, what is it going to take to make a parallel processing unit? Gold, silver ore, and a table uh, table coral sample, which, I mean, that's really freaking easy, if I'm being honest. Um, grab that silver ore, and then I know we have table coral in here somewhere. There we go. We'll just take all those and uh, make that pretty simply, but that's, of course, only part of it. So now that we've done that, we need to make a test override module, which I need lead for, and guess who doesn't have... Any extra lead? Of course I do not. Gosh, freaking dang it, why would I? I mean, it would only make so much sense to have extra lead, and of course I do not. Ugh. Hold on. Put all of this away really quickly. Maybe I have some in my, uh, in one of my storage modules. Let me check that really quickly. You should be able to go into these without, yeah, um, without actually having them attached to the sea truck. There we go. Let's see. Any in any of these? I don't have any lead. Are you freaking kidding me? Ah! You know, I really get the feeling that this game is constantly letting me on, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, uh, what do I still freaking need? Oh, I need the titanium. I shouldn't have put that away. Oops. That's my bad. Okay, this should be enough to craft this thing, right? Wait, no? Oh, and the copper wire, which I also put away. Gosh dang it, I'm so good at this. Alright, this should be enough. Here we go. Alright, so now all we need to do is take this up to the satellite over at the Delta Station, and that should shut off the signal, and we'll be allowed to talk to Marguerite. Of course, we have a whole number of other things that we can do, like, oh, I don't know, building a nuclear reactor, as well as building the high-capacity... Um, Oxygen tank and a, a myriad of other things that we can do. I mean, we can take a look at all this stuff. So large room, which is just two plasteel ingots, should be fairly simple to make. And then I can make the windows kind of on demand if I need to. The nuclear reactor is going to require an advanced wiring kit and some more lead, which is a little a little bit more time consuming. But it's definitely something I can do. Ooh, I can make a large room partitions as well, which is actually a very smart idea. Then the modification station is going to require computer chip, titanium, diamond, and what do you know? More lead! Well, we'll have to worry about all of that in the next episode because that is it for this one. Guys, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Subnautica Below Zero very, very much. I will see you all in the next one.